Three things to go over before we dive in today's video. The first up, guys, I am still under the weather. Finds out that I did not have strep throat. No, I had a bacteria infection in my throat, which is disgusting and it hurts like holy hell. So I'm trying to keep this video as short as possible, but also so I can heal to be able to do the next thing, which is do our live stream tomorrow night, uh, which is gonna be still at 9.30 p.m. Eastern. Comics and beer, Stephanie and I getting back in front of the camera live. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So I wanna make sure I rest up today as much as I can to do that live stream. And the third thing, so I was reached out by Amy over at Dynamite Comics and he, she was hoping that I could tell you guys about this little backer kit campaign that they're doing for this awesome plush set for Stray Dogs. Now, I've seen a few other people talking about this. It is super cool. I personally did not read Stray Dogs or Feral, but guys, if you're into either of those comics, you probably should check out this campaign because who doesn't want a soft little adorable plushie to hold as you read these amazing comics? Because they are really cool plushies. And there's also a lot of other things available on the Backer Kit campaign. Guys, I'll leave a link for that down in the description below so that way you guys can check it out on your own time. All right. So, I don't want to talk too much, so let's go ahead and dive in to today's video. What is going on, comic book fans? Welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to another Final Order Cutoff Highlights video. In this video, I took a look at every single book that's coming out on this weekend's Final Order Cutoff, and I tried to pull out all the really cool, exciting things to share with you guys. I'm talking about all the best covers, in my opinion. I'm talking about all the best new number ones to read, in my opinion. Now, since I am a little under the weather, and yesterday was rough, I took like three naps, no, two naps yesterday, each for like over half an hour each. I just wasn't feeling it. So I didn't have time to do any speculation work um, for today's video, so there will be no spec stuff on today's video. I'll also be sharing all the really cool things that I found, and there are a lot. So. And what is the other things I need to tell you guys? I need to tell you guys about this weekend's final order cutoff order deadline dates. And that is November 11th of 2024 by 5 p.m. Eastern. So if you guys are interested in picking up any of the books on today's video, you guys need to get your pre-orders by then. So if you're interested in any books for speculation or you just want to save that sweet 20 to 35 percent, you got to get your orders in by November 11th of 2024 by 5 p.m. Um, what is the other thing? Um, I record this video early. I'm recording it on Thursday. Today is Thursday, November 7th of 2024. And all the publishers have until tomorrow, Friday, November 8th at 5 p.m. Eastern to lock in officially what books are gonna be on this weekend's final order cutoff. So that means they can add or remove books after I record today's video. But I record this video now because it fits within my schedule the best. So you guys should be making sure you do your own research because a book could be added or removed after I record this video. And I think that's it. At least that's gonna be it for today. I have no more in me. So let's go ahead and move over to my favorite part of today's video, and that is my cover liver fix. Now, if I think a cover is spec worthy, I will add the little marker up on screen to let you know that I think that book couldn't possibly move well on the secondary market, either right out of the gate or in the future. But again, I did not do any research to anything in the guts of any of these books. So make sure you guys are checking Left Taros and the comic book frontier. All right, guys, let's move on or in coverprice.com. All right, let's move on. All right, so my first cover that I really like is I Hate Fairyland, issue number 18. This is the cover C. It's done by Scotty Young. It's a one in 10. But guys, there also is a 1 in 25 ratio variant, which is a black and white ratio variant done by Scotty Young. And those black and white 1 in 25s have sold well on the secondary market. I'm talking specifically talking about the Scotty Young ones. So I would keep an eye on that one. And this one is really cool. If you look at all the little characters on the cover, it's fantastic. Next up, The Scorched, issue number 36. This is the cover B variant. It's done by Vaughn Randall. And man... Does she spawn or lady spawn? No, she spawn. Look absolutely fantastic on this cover. I love it. Next up, Top Cow Holiday Special, all through the house. It's a one shot, and the art is done by Arif Paternino. You know, it kind of looks like Mark Silvestri, especially his things that I think that is his signature on the thing. But League of Comic Geeks has it as Arif Partino, but I'm pretty sure it's Silvestri. But this cover is really nice. 
I like it. All right, guys. Next up, we have Absolute Superman, the Noir Edition, issue number one, with the cover C foil virgin variant done by Rafa Sandoval. This in a foil would be absolutely fantastic. I think it would just be so cool. Now, next up is Action Comics, issue number 1078. This is the cover D. It's an artist spotlight special, and it's done by David Nakayama. It is so good. I stopped reading Action Comics, and yeah, I'm going to be picking this up for this cover. Next up, Batgirl, issue number two, with the cover B variant, done by Jorge Jimenez. The cover A is also pretty good as well, but this one right here by Jorge Jimenez is fantastic. Next up, Batman, issue number 155, the cover F. It's a 1 in 50 ratio variant, done by Nimit Malvea. Butchered your name, I apologize, but this cover is actually pretty stinking cool, especially when you compare it to the other covers. This one is definitely the coolest. Next up, Batman and Santa Claus Silent Night Returns, issue number two, the cover C, which is a one in 25 ratio variant, done by Sanford Green. Yeah, you got Santa Claus and Batman pounding it out. Let's freaking go. I will definitely be picking that up for my PC. Next up is probably one of my favorite covers coming out this week. This is Gotham City Sirens uncovered issue number one this is the cover e it's a one in 25 ratio variant done by marcio dakara now marcio dakara is the main artist on poison ivy and i love his renditions of poison ivy and um harley quinn and now he's added in cat woman as well how good is this he is such an underrated artist in my opinion and this cover is just so fantastic i just wish this was an actual comic book it, it, i mean it is but it's just a bunch of covers with inside of a comic book because this is a book to highlight all the amazing cover art that's been done uh, for Gotham City Sirens. But man, this cover right here is so, so good. All right, guys, next up is a connecting cover set. It's the cover B and the cover C coming out for the same issue. This is Green Lantern issue number 18. Um, this cover is done by Mark Spears. And how fantastic is this cover? It is so cool. The characters still look absolutely great. Uh, Guy Gardner looks a little weird. I don't know, but I can see him definitely looking like that. But man, Hal Jordan, John Stewart, I forgot the name, Jojo Mellon down the bottom. They're all so good. They look great. Next up is Green Lantern issue number 18, the cover D, which is another artist spotlight variant done by David Nakayama. He has a couple more, I think, coming out this week. I don't love this one so much, but I know you guys would. So I'm going to share the stuff that you guys are going to love as well. All right, guys, next up, Poison Ivy, issue number 28, the cover B, which is the trade dress, and the cover F, which is the 1 in 50 virgin ratio variant done by Jenny Frizen. How beautiful is that? My only question is, why did she go with such a blue tint? That's a little odd. You know, Poison Ivy should be bright green and vibrant and reds and just like, you know, alive blue. I don't know. Just an odd choice in my opinion. Next up is another cover for Poison Ivy, issue number 28. This is the cover C variant done by Pablo's Villalobos. Yeah, it's not his best, but it's still really good. Next up, Poison Ivy, issue number 28, the cover D artist spotlight variant done by David Nakayama. Now, what is interesting here, she, he gave her kind of like a little bit of a pointy nose, but I'm okay with it. Kind of makes her look a little more older, I guess, a little more powerful. I don't know, something about it I kind of really like, and I just, I don't know, I love his renditions of Poison Ivy, and this is really good, in my opinion. All right, guys, we're going to continue on. Next up, Superwoman special, issue number one, with the cover E, which is a 1 in 25 ratio variant. Again, Mark Spears making the list again. His covers have just been blowing up everywhere. And this one, you got Superwoman holding up Lobo, shaking him, and there's all kinds of money and stuff falling. So, so good. Next up, Deadpool, issue number nine, with the new Deadpool variant. That's what they called it on League of Comic Geeks. And the 1 in 50 virgin ratio variant done by Jessica Fong. I think it's great. Um, I do think they're, what they're doing to the daughter of Deadpool is aging her up for some reason. She's a little girl still. She's supposed to be like a teenager, like 13 or something. She looks like an older woman here. She looks like she's well into her teens, into her 20s. Just keep her a kid for a little while. She can still do badass, murdery things. I don't care about that. Just don't age her up too fast because then you're, they're going to sexy rise her. We don't need a sexy Lady Deadpool. We don't. If we do, bring back Lady Deadpool. Make her sexy. Next up, Ultimate Spider-Man issue number 12 with the variant and the 1 to 100 virgin ratio variant done by Ji Hong Lee. 
Someone in the Discord posted this and everyone was like, yeah, really cool, great. And then one person, I forgot who it was, said, look at her hands. And then now if you look at her hand, it probably ruins it for you because man, her hands are so weird looking. Why, Ji Hung Lee? You can do better than that. Because everything else is fantastic. Continue on. Next up, Wolverine Revenge, issue number four. Um, this is the variant cover done by Patrick Leeson. Definitely my favorite cover for this series so far, or at least at least this issue. I don't know. I don't remember all the covers for the previous issues, but this one is really good. And I'm a Patrick Leeson fan, so I love it. Next up, DuckTales. You heard that right. DuckTales issue number two. This is the cover E. It's a classic character art variant. And there's also the cover L, which is a virgin 1 in 20 ratio variant done by Tommaso Ronda. And I just, I don't know, I have such a affection and affinity for DuckTales because it was such a huge part of my childhood. I loved DuckTales. It was so good. And this cover um, with Tailspin is just so good. Yeah, it's just, it is just really great. Next up, Grim Tales of Terror 2024 Holiday Special, issue number one. This is the cover C variant done by Igor Lo, uh, Lomov. Lomov. Look at it. Do I need to say more? We're not talking about the guts, people. We're talking about the covers in this cover. Yeah, that's a really beautiful woman with a scythe. That's really good. Um, next up, Jim Henson presents issue number one with the cover D, which is a 1 in 15 ratio variant done by Jorge Corona. Yeah, there's just a lot of really cool things on this cover. Jorge Corona's art is fantastic, and I just, I don't know, I saw it, and I just felt nostalgic, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to share this with everyone. Next up, Transformers issue number 15. This is the cover D. It's a 1 in 25 ratio variant done by EJ Su. Yeah, Starscream on the cover. It's like his like black and blue um, print cover. It's cool. I like it. Next up is a book that I completely missed when it was on previous. This is You Won't Feel a Thing issue number one with the cover B and the cover X. And the X stands for naughty. That's right, Tula Latte with a naughty cover coming out for this issue. It's just a gorgeous cover. And I'm probably going to pick up both because the X does not look like it's going to be a ratio book of any kind. So you can get the regular and the naughty. So I'll pick it up when it comes out on New Comic Day. I don't get the naughty, because why not? Next up, um, Absolute Superman issue number two with the cover B in the 1 in 50 ratio variant, done by Mumad as Rar. So good. I love this guy's artwork so much. Every time he puts out a cover, I'm like, man, so good. I just love this idea of Superman. I don't know, does he get power from the earth or something? I haven't read my copy yet because it doesn't come until next week. Sorry, there's a train coming, so I'm going to pause for a second. So yeah, my copy doesn't come until next week, but it's so cool. I don't know. It's just, it's a really cool element to add Superman, and I really like it, and Mamad's art is so great. Now next up, we got Creep Show Holiday Special 2024, issue number one with the cover C, which is a 1 in 10 ratio variant done by Steve Beach. Again, I don't like this cover, but I know you guys will probably like this cover because this horror is so big right now. And this cover, I don't know, it's really cool. It kind of has like almost um, Home Alone vibes because they got the kid with the tree in the background and you got the guy shoveling because you know there's a, the guy in the Home Alone that everyone's scared of because he shovels and he's supposed to be putting dead bodies into the bucket with all the sand. I don't know. Am I going too far with that? But that's just, I don't know. That's what it says to me, and that cover is pretty cool. Next up is Dread the Halls, issue number one with the cover E. This is the 1 in 20 ratio of area done by Maria Wolf. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, I sent this into the Discord yesterday, just the cover A, which is like this, but the cover A has more color to it. And they're like, no, Bruce, check out the 1 in 20. Yeah, the 1 in 20 is way, way better. Uh, two more covers. Next up is Grim Fairy Tales number 19. This is the cover D variant done by Ivan Tao. Yeah, this is pretty good in my opinion. I like this. I, I, I waver on Ivan Tao a lot if it's good or it's bad. And this one I think is pretty good in the pinks, man. When he adds a lot, a lot of vibrant covers to his, um, adds a lot of vibrant cover colors to his covers, it just pops and I don't know, it adds something to it. I really like it. And the last one up. Thundercats Apex issue number one. This is the cover B, but there's also a cover I, Metal Virgin, J, cover J, Virgin, cover M, 1 in 10 Trade Foil, cover P, 1 in 15 Foil Virgin, all done by Lucio Perillo. Perillo goodness, man. Now, I do have an opportunity to maybe get Ed Brisson, who is the writer of this book, on the channel, but we are having scheduling issues. Um, 
his schedule just does not match mine, so I might miss out on the opportunity to interview him for this book, because I think that I am enjoying Thundercats, which would be a real bummer, but guys, this cover. And Ed Brisson is a pretty good writer, so I would highly suggest checking out this one shot, Thundercats Apex number one. All right, guys, those are all my cover lover picks. I'm gonna come back and we're gonna talk about these seven, that's right, seven new number one titles on this weekend's Final Order Cutoff that I think you guys should check out because the stories sound really, really good. All right, we do have seven new number ones to go over that I think you guys really should check out because they sound really cool. And we're gonna kick this off with Batman Dark Patterns issue number one. And we're gonna go ahead and dive right in to the creative team and that is Dan Waiters as the writer and art by Hayden Sherman. That is a great creative team. Hayden Sherman's art is fantastic. Dan Waiters as a writer is really great. So let's go ahead and read the synopsis. Set during the early years of Batman's career, Batman Dark Patterns delves into four mysterious cases as he attempts to cement his place as Gotham's protector while the city itself fights back against him. This is the Dark Knight detective as his most stripped down core, a man relying on his wits, his skills, little else as he tackles some of the most twisted mysteries Gotham cities and its protectors have ever encountered. Case number one, We Are Wounded. A series of sickening, gruesome murders has sent shockwaves through Gotham. Are these random works of a serial killer, or is there something more sinister at play? Batman attempts to get to the bottom of the mystery before any more victims are claimed. Now, this just seems like it's going to be a classic, you know, Batman story. Early in his career, Dan Waiters is going to take him on this journey, and I just cannot wait. And Hayden Sherman's art is so, so good. Now, there are um, two covers that have been released so far. And there is the cover A, which has like Batman putting on a shirt. Um, and then there's the cover B done by Steven Subic, which is fine. Now the cover, there is a one in 25, which is just a minimal trade dress of the cover A. The next up is Thundercats Apex issue number one. Um, I am, like I said, pretty excited about this. This is written by Ed Brisson and it's gonna have art by Rafa Lobosco. I wanna say I pronounced that right. But let's go ahead and read the synopsis for this. Across a desert landscape, a cloaked rider emerges from the shimmering heat, a lone figure on a battered mount. He's a tempting target for bandits, and temptation is not something that the inhabitants of these badlands are inclined to resist. Unfortunately for the miscreants who decide to waylay him, that choice will be likely the last one they'll ever make. And when the dusty traveler walks into the local saloon, it soon becomes clear that anyone who stands between him and his mission will share the same fate. But who is this mysterious stranger? And what is the target that he has fixed his glowing red eye upon? Only one eye? And where the heck is there a saloon on this planet? Whenever we're in the Thundercats, it seems like it's just desert and then like their base of their crash ship. So where is the saloon? I wanna know. So I'm pretty pumped for this. It's a one shot, so you don't really have to invest too much. And if you're already reading Thundercats and you're already reading Thundercats Chitara, why wouldn't you wanna pick this up as well? And this character was in issue number nine or something? I don't know, whatever issue was the last issue of Thundercats, he was introduced and I'm pretty excited about that. So let's go ahead and move on to the next book. Superwoman special, issue number one. Now, I normally would not be excited about this book. I would be like, hell freaking no. But if you've been reading Superman, written by Joshua Williamson, you would know that this run is, it's just different. It's just different. And Joshua Williamson is writing this book and I'm sure it's gonna tie right into Superman. So I gotta check this out. But let me go ahead and tell you who the artist on this book is going to be. And that is Edwin Galmon and he has some awesome chops. So this is going to have great art and it's going to have great writing by Joshua Williamson. But let's go ahead and read the very short synopsis for this book. The amazing story of how Daily Planet Editor-in-Chief Lois Lane got superpowers and became Superwoman is finally told. What does it mean for the matriarch of the superfamily to fly alongside her family and friends? And how long will these powers last? And who wants these powers for themselves? Guest starring the Atom, Mr. Terrific, Supergirl, and the Silver Banshee. Now, again, the main reason why I'm excited for this book is because it's written by Joshua Williamson and it's gonna tie into the whole story that he's telling on Superman. And I've been raving about Superman to you guys for a very long time, so I'm pumped for this. I think it's gonna be really great. It is $5.99, so it's a little pricey, but we are getting 48 pages because it is a one-shot. 
The variant covers, like I said, there is at 125 done by um, Mark Spears, which is great. The other ones aren't so great. There's a cover B by Dave Wilkins, a cover C by Elizabeth Torque, it says, but it doesn't look like Torque to me. And there is a foil done by Edwin Galmon, which I'm guessing is just a foil of the cover A. But let's move on because we still have four more books. Dread the Halls, issue number one. Now, I'm putting this on the list because horror is so popular, especially in the Discord, and just it's just popular in general. And this book did sound pretty cool. It's coming from Image, Image Comics, which is a great publisher. It's going to be written by Chris Hall and Jordan Hart, and it's going to have art by Lee Ferguson, Walter Pax, and Fabio Varas. Um, and it has this awesome cover A done by Maria Wolf in that 1 in 20, which is just a um, virgin without a lot of the color, which is so great. But let's go ahead and read the synopsis. The Perfect Holiday Stocking Stuffer, a collection of horror tales to read curled up by the light of the Yule Log. Be of good fear. Long before Americans celebrated horror on Halloween, the Victorians did it gathered around the fireplace on Christmas Eve. Dread the Hall honors this macabre tradition by wishing you and yours happy holidays with stories of ghosts, ghastly abominations, and vile creatures. Covers by Red Hot artist Maria Wolf, Margaret Suave, Wrapping Paper Variant by Jordan Hart, and The Holiday Homage by Lee Ferguson will allow you to spread the dread this season in horrifying festive style. So good. So good. That sounds really cool. I'm not a huge horror fan, but I know a lot of you guys are, and that just, I don't know, that seems like it's going to be a winner. All right, guys, next up is a title. Again, I missed this when it was on previews, um, so we'll have to pick it up when it comes out on a new comic day, which is going to cost me like $10. Uh, but this is You Won't Feel a Thing, issue number one. Now, this is coming from the creative team of Scott Snyder and Jock. Let that sink in. Scott Snyder and Jock back together again. And this is just, I don't know, when those two get together, you just have to pick it up. Now, let's go ahead and read the synopsis. Modern comic writing legend Scott Snyder reunites with iconic horror artist Jock to tell the story of an alien detective's past coming back to haunt him. Years ago, Jack Bernard was an accomplished homicide detective, so accomplished that it cost him everything else in his life. Now Jack finds himself alone, trapped in a retirement home with a brain tumor that's slowly sapping his once keen mind of all memories. But when an ice-cold serial killer case from out of his past rears its head, Jack must call on all his remaining memories in order to stop a killer that only he still believes really exists. You Won't Feel a Thing is a sobering murder mystery exploring the anguish of a man whose own body and mind is turning against him and the desire to find meaning in one's own life before it unravels. So good. So good. Um, now... I already showed you guys the cover B, and I've already shown you the cover A. It should have been up on screen for most of the me reading that uh, synopsis. Um, there's the cover F, done by Jay Lee, which is creepy. What's up with all these teeth? Um, there's the cover G, which is a blank sketch. The cover X, which is that naughty Tulalote. Um, the cover C, which is a 1 in 10 um, variant, done by Marcos Martin. The 1 in 25, which is the cover D, done by Eliza Ivanov. And then there's the cover E, um, which is the final cover, and it's done by Oliver Barrett. So that is pretty cool. That sounds awesome. It's Scott Snyder. I pick up almost, oh no, let's be honest. I pick up every single book that man um, writes, even if I don't um, like the synopsis. I just trust in him to tell a good story, and almost every book comes through. All right, guys, two more books. Next up, Two-Face issue number one. Now, this is coming from the writer of Christian Ward and has art by Fabio Veras. Um, and this is about Two-Face, and that has me excited. Now, Christian Ward, correct me if I'm wrong, he normally does the interiors in book. He doesn't do the writing, right? So he's switching over to be a writer now? I don't know. Let's find out. Harvey Dent's Greatest Trial Begins. After years of internal conflict, both halves of Harvey Dent have reached an uneasy peace. In DC's new Two-Face series, Harvey uses his skills as an attorney to resolve the conflicts of Gotham's weirdest and most dangerous criminals, starting with Victor Zaz. When Zaz is accused of murdering a fellow member of Gotham's underworld contingent, who better to prove a criminal's innocent than someone who's been on both sides of the law? I don't know. I am so... Um, all in, I guess you could say, even though this says it on the cover and that's so cheesy. But I love Batman and I love Batman's rogues gallery and all of the villain books that DC has been pulling out have been really, really good at pulling out, putting out. 
um, have been really enjoyable. I've liked them all. Penguin, Joker, now Two-Face, Poison Ivy, like so many great, great books. Um, there are some really cool covers. Um, Christian Ward did the cover B, so he is the, I think, mainly an artist. Um, there is the cover C, done by Chris Samney, and then there's a 1 in 25 done by Leonardo Romero. All right, guys, the final book that we're going to talk about is TVA issue number one. Now, the reason why I added this, added this to this list, because looking at this cover by Pepe Larez is so good. And we get so many characters that have been on the big screen, the small screen, and also in our comic books. So it just it's drawing me in. And it's pretty cool that they're taking something that was a, like from the TV series, um, Loki, and bringing it in and giving its own little world in the Marvel Universe in the comics, the 616. And if you've been reading um, Spider-Gwen Ghost Spider, you know she's been working with the TVA agent, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and find out who the creative team on this, and that is Catherine Blair. Now I found out that she is the writer of Loki season two, or was one of the writers in Loki season two, and the art is done by Pierre Perez. Now let's go ahead and read the synopsis. For all times always, the Time Variance Authority has long washed over the timeline, protecting it from dangerous variations that could cause the end of everything. Now, as the organization begins to expand its tolerance of variance, it's enlisted some new recruits from timelines that have been wiped from existence. Captain Peggy Carter, super soldier of her world, gambit, despondent and aimless from the loss of his lady love, and this, this can't be right, Spider Gwen? Has her world been destroyed? Writer Catherine Blair, Loki Season 2, and artist Pierre Perez, he was an artist on Carnage and Spider-Woman, bring a touch of cinematic flair to the bureaucracy at the end of time. That just sounds, I don't know, it could be pretty cool. I don't know how her writing is going to be because she hasn't written a comic before. Um, and there are some pretty cool variants for this. There is the Umberto Ramos Miss Minutes variant. There is the 1 in 25 um, Carmo Canero variant, which is more Miss Minutes. And then there is a 1 in 100 Umberto Ramos Miss Minutes Virgin variant. All right, guys, those are all the new number ones that I think you should consider adding to your poll list because these sound really good in my opinion. Now, I gotta stop talking. I've already talk, spoke way too much. I can tell I already went too far. So let's go ahead and wrap this video up. All right, guys, I'm gonna keep this short and sweet. I'm gonna thank every single one of you who watched that video, especially if you watched from the beginning all the way to this point right here. Um, you guys know what you are. You guys are legends. Now, if you guys haven't smashed that like button just yet, do me a favor, smash that like button. And if you watched that video and you enjoy comic book content and you're not subscribed, well, what are you doing? Get yourself subscribed, hit that bell for notifications, and smash that like button. Last but not least, a quick reminder, two actually two reminders. There is that backer kit um, for stray dogs, plushies. Um, check it out, guys. It's really, really cool. Tris Forstner um, and I forgot the writer of the book for stray dogs. Um, they put that all together support them. It's really cool. They're almost halfway to the goal of $20,000. It's like nine ninety nine or something like that. So if you're into that, support them. Really cool. Last thing I remind you guys about tomorrow night, even if I'm sick, I'm coming to do the live stream. It's going to be epic. It's going to be awesome. It, episode 104 of Comics and Beer. I probably won't drink because it would probably be really bad to mix amoxicillin with um, alcohol and probably reverse the effects of what it's trying to do. But the show is going to go on. We're going to do it. It's going to be amazing. I hope to see you guys there at 9.30 p.m. Eastern. It might be a little bit later. We might come on late. we got family stuff to do. Um, but we want to go on earlier because we're old. And we want to go to bed. So hopefully 9.30. Be there. Be square. Have yourself a great final war cutoff. I'll see you guys tomorrow night on Comics and Beer. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.